So now we have to understand what we mean by climate scenario. Why do we need scenarios? Because when you want to say what will happen in the future, what could happen in the future as we kept saying, you need to have some scenarios of what population will do as we said, what technology will do and how intelligent will we be in reducing our impact on the planet and reducing our greenhouse gas emissions and so on. And the context of course is that if you keep looking at monthly global average temperatures since June 2023 have set records. So you are looking at monthly global temperatures going from January to December for ninth for the 1940s which are down here and the 1950s which began to get warmer we have year-to-year -year changes as we said and remember these are the anomalies with respect to some baseline and the baseline here is from 1850 to 1900 average which means you take all the Januaries between 1850 and 1900 and make a mean January that's our climatology of that baseline do the same for February March and so on till December and you look at the deviations of each month of the 50s and 40s and 50s and 60s from the climatology so you take all the years of 1940s and sub you know subtract this baseline and see how much warmer or cooler it was and we have years being warmer than before and cooler than before because we have natural variability heat can go into the ocean more in one year and less in the other year and so on but even as the oceans keep getting warmer the co2 and the greenhouse gases are not reducing which means you expect each decade to get warmer and warmer so you have the 60s and then 80s 70s were still here in the bluish color that is faint but 80s came 90s came 2000s and 2010s we have seen this figure in another way and you can see that temperatures are jumping up and up and up and 2023 came and went way out of everything we had seen before does that mean the 2020s will be also much warmer not necessarily because 2024 and 25 26 and so on may be cooler so we may come back down but this is not good and 2024 has again jumped way out of the previous anomaly so we are some of the warmest temperatures since 1850 okay so we have to be careful and this is why we have to worry about what will happen if we continue this way and how do we do that well there is increasing evidence of an acceleration in the rate of warming over the past 15 years so the keeling curve that we have been looking at with its ups and downs and it's been increasing but since the, the 2010s it has increased more per year and the warming seems to have gone up more per year but one thing you should remember now you're an expert if you're too young to understand do not worry about it we talked about natural variability and anthropogenic warming now I'm using a word that I didn't use so far anthropogenic a n t h r o p o g e n i c anthropogenic means human made any greenhouse gases increased by humans is called anthropogenic emissions warming related to anthropogenic emissions is called anthropogenic warming and anthropogenic climate change and so on and so forth so anthropogenic warming is accelerating of course you have to always be careful because one 10 year period doesn't mean it will continue this way it may come back but but it's a risk because if you keep increasing greenhouse gases like CO2 you know very well that warming should continue in the global average because CO2 is a greenhouse gas which traps the outgoing thermal energy so the blanket is getting thicker and trapping more energy okay so what do we do about it we begin to think what future may 
look like we make several scenarios which means we assume things and we imagine things and we build models remember the models we use and these are not just climate models these are socio-economic models which means it will talk about how people will buy things how people will sell things how countries will export things and import things and what governments will do and and so on and so forth so this is an example if you are too young to understand do not worry about it just imagine that there are people sitting around in a group and saying this is what will happen in the future and there are different groups so they are these you can think of as different groups or different models of socio-economics and where we are in the current this is let's say in some year 2020 or 2021 so if you look at the mix of energies from coal from oil from gas nuclear energy biomass which means you are burning plants and corn ethanol and so on biodiesel and so on so forth and sorry a hiccup maybe somebody is remembering me which will be nice if somebody remembers me right and we have renewables which means solar and wind and hydroelectric and so on nuclear is also considered renewable because it doesn't emit carbon like coal oil and gas do but there is always some detail you have to r dig up the nuclear fossil nuclear fuels l like uranium and so on for feeding the nuclear plants etc and even when you grow bioenergy biomass corn you are adding fertilizer you are adding water and there is emission coming from the agriculture as well 25% of all the CO2 we are producing greenhouse gases we are producing actually comes from agriculture so nobody is getting away free without carbon really but renewables you know they produce solar cells windmills they have some emissions as well but overall you have to see are they emitting less than mm. the energy they are saving in terms of the emissions or burning of fossil fuels right so in the current mix we have coal and we have a lot of oil and we have a lot of gas and we have a tiny bit of biomass and a very sm small amount of renewables and there are multiple scenarios called shared socio-economic pathways big words kids if you are too young don't worry about it just means we are imagining as a global humanity as a combined citizenry of the planet all countries together poor and rich what are we going to do in terms of energy how much coal will you continue to burn and how much more renewables will you add how much more biofuels will you add these are different pathways which means in some pathways we imagine countries will be fighting and some countries will say I don't care about climate change I'm going to burn fossil fuels I have coal so I'm going to burn coal because I don't have the money to buy oil and install solar and so on and so forth I want to grow my economy so I'm going to burn fossil fuels and there will be conflict and two countries neighbors or countries far away fight for some reason and there are competition and so on and so forth so all kinds of scenarios for the future are imagined these are scenarios because they are like movies they are like what happens in the future based on our imagination so you can imagine the best case scenario like SSP 1 shared socio-economic pathway 1 where you have more and more renewables as you can see in the blue here and you are reducing the use of coal and fossil fuels like oil and gas and you are growing nuclear and biomass and uh, renewables in other pathways you can see that the extra joules of primary energy produced itself is going to be higher which means we are being less efficient in the energy use in the appliances washing machines and uh, dishwashers and cars and uh, electric vehicles and we are burning more energy and so on and we get really bad up here this one goes up and this one comes down and this one goes up again and so on so what am I saying I'm saying that 
there are different ways to imagine the future nobody is sure because something suddenly happens some terrorist attack happens and some war starts and some market collapse happens and some big typhoon comes a typhoon hits philippines which is in the pacific and all the coconut plants get destroyed and the coconut oil and coconut products that are supplied to every country on the planet by philippines is going to be affected negatively because you don't have coconut products for producing your you know sweets and food and other things and your economy suffers so now various things are connected because the economy is global which is a good thing in many ways because you can eat a fruit in any season because it's not your season to for mango but somebody else is growing mango because it's in the different hemisphere and when you have summer they still have uh, spring and so on and fall and so on and so forth okay so this is how we build scenarios and we also think about how the co2 emissions associated with these different scenarios will grow into the future and you should be very clear here we don't say years but it says primary energy in 2100 okay year 2100 is almost 80 75 years away so here we are looking at emissions into the future out to 2100 in the worst case scenarios the amount of co2 in gigatons of co2 is going to be very high if we don't do much we can be less and less and maybe we can even begin to reduce our emissions by 2050 or so and become maybe net zero what does that mean we'll come back and discuss i don't want to burden you with too much information but as we increase the emissions along these paths the warming will reach different levels in the worst case scenarios it will be five degrees warmer than the industrial revolution beginning will be five degrees warmer than when we started the industrial revolution and even in the best case of scenarios where we are reducing emissions we will warm up to two or three degrees centigrade here why remember co2 keeps accumulating in the atmosphere because it doesn't disappear very quickly which means as long as we are emitting even if we reduce emissions we will keep adding to the tank that is holding the co2 since industrial revolution which means we will continue the warming so then the question is how can we keep the warming to as low as possible right so we'll come back and discuss a few more details about the scenarios so just get used to the idea of how we use the models to say what could happen to sea level in the future to glaciers to temperature to heat waves to agricultural production and storms and so on and so forth okay so we'll come back and continue this is a bit complicated so don't feel scared or anxious if you don't understand if you're too young don't worry about it but if you're old enough you listen again and you follow up other podcasts you go look up on google and you read the reports written by the united nations group and uh, you ask your teacher parents sibling neighbor friends and so on and so forth or send me the questions as well okay see you in the next podcast to discuss a little bit more about climate scenarios for the future okay